Hello Polygoners! I am Shaft and you are watching a daily cast, but this is a weird daily cast because technically this is a response to one of my own videos because we don't let people on Polygon Gaming unless they show themselves to have a sense of humor and a bridge in their heart under which trolls live. So in true troll fashion, here on the top left hand side of Odyssey Ladder Edition, in the pink Zerg trunks, he is off racing, he is rival gaming's disrespect. And that is definitely his proxy hatchery. Here on the bottom right hand side of Odyssey Ladder Edition, playing on Seeker's team, Team Yor. At least they're on the same team together. And Seeker happens to be on that team. He's not the owner of the team like I just made it sound. Anyways, he's playing Terran. It's Blazois. So yeah, this was basically a practice cast. Where in which we just needed people to play while we were getting some production stuff set up. And I happened to be casting. So I was like, yeah, could we get you to play Zerg? Disrespect your Grandmaster. He's Masters. It's only fair. Blah, 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 blah. This is how we end up in this situation. Holy crap. He's got fi over 500 APM there for a second. Okay. Anyways. um, So we end up in this situation. And basically over the course of this game, I realized that he, he is in disrespect, is trolling me. Um, in the last Newbie Tuesday I did with Jay Ennen, uh, Zerg Herd, we talked about how rushing the Broodlords can be really, really bad, and how you have to have, like, a ground army there to support the Broodlords, but even then, it's probably better not to go Broodlords that quick, and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Well, Disrespect takes some of my advice and, you know, listens, and shows, like, the proper way to do this and then he takes some of my advice and shows why I'm an idiot so this is a little bit of a mix of both the first part of this is this proxy hatch notice this just got a couple of links like those are the six links he would have made to deal with the Reaper anyway he is continuing to mine even into the uh, the spawning pool so we've got a non Sauron style Zerg despite the three bases but this is a mineral dump that slows down the Terran from taking a natural, which means the two to three base type um, attacks that really destroy a quick Broodlord aren't going to be possible. And this is just, you know, a basic contain. Meanwhile, at home, we've got a lot of workers being made. We've got just the smallest amount of defense, including the Baneling Nest. Baneling is going to be super, super important for defending. If uh, any attacks coming, we've got the quick layer and we've got this third base right here, which is pretty much just going to start mining, but it's on gold uh, minerals. So what this is going to do is allow like a, what will seem like a normal amount of mineral income, but also have the, the extractor. So it's something that could probably only be done on this map, but that's something to be aware of. So maybe everything I said about the previous would apply on this map like wouldn't apply on this map so just to think about notice there's still been no offense um out of disrespect we see blaze definitely overreacting a little bit going for the raven going for the siege tank but this is not an offensive proxy hatch so a little bit of an overreaction there but that's what disrespect wanted he wanted the overreaction which is going to give him time to get the layer up we should probably see an infestation pit here shortly. There's the uh, centrifugal hooks. And here's the spire starting. So remember, this all starts off what uh, JNN was describing as Ling Baneling Corruptor. And the marines and the tanks finally taking out this faux proxy hatchery. And the queen that had been produced has just been spreading creep. Again, spreading the creep means he'll know when Blazois moves out. Blazois will have to commit time to cleaning it out and being on this side of the map. And it's going to take forever for this creep to recede. And maybe, uh, 
we'll be even able to work this creep tumor back over here and piss them off that much more. Anyways, Blazewa has managed to take this though. And this is the hard part of a contain because in a contain, once uh, the contained player breaks out, you do have to worry about offensive eventually. So Blazewa, you know, right now he's gonna have to deal with this creep spike. But at a certain point, probably when stem pack and the one one finishes, this is going to be a pretty nasty army. This queen just totally pooping creep, creep all over the map, though. A couple of overlords being sent over there. Clearly disrespect not a Zerg player naturally, but that's okay. He's doing a great job. And there are the Corruptors. So at this point, we've got Disrespect going for a macro hatch, taking another base, and getting the Infestation Pit. Eventually, we're going to see the Hive, but because Army is going to be the weakest investment at present, Disrespect cannot afford to trade this Army. This again goes right back to the macro triangle, and that means Blaze is going to have to attack. So Disrespect keeping everything on his side of the map, because if he does commit, he wants a sizable amount to start with. This is his seed army and he can reinforce this pretty easily but Blazewag going to make it easy for him goes ahead and moves out on the map forgets to siege up and uh yeah boom Bane links to the face my friends and this is uh pretty much the situation Disrespect was hoping for um but being a little bit more mobile than his opponent he was this far forward not worrying about being on creep and just that is not something that is pretty normal for a zerk who has moved back so it's just important to realize like if your investment is an army you should be on your side of the map like if your primary investment is an army be on your side of the map and that that was really really good by um by disrespect now disrespect about to be finishing hive and only just now starting to two because he has gone for a fast fire, gone for the corruptors, going for a huge amount of banelings, and going for a fast hive in the broodlords, just can't afford the upgrades. It's very, very smart of him to uh, to have been delaying them up until this point. You really only have either go for fast high tech or upgrades. Usually not both at the same time because it eliminates any chance you would have of having an economy or really an army for that matter. Notice down here, uh, Blazewa definitely wrecking the mineral income, but disrespect far, far ahead on gas. This is just the basic macro triangle. Now again, Blazewa trying to make this army thing happen, but the Lings and the Banelings are already there. Had he been trying to be aggressive with these and constantly having to reproduce them, the worker count would not be there to support such a uh, endeavor. But right now, Disrespect is in a perfectly fine situation because he has been keeping his army defensive. Even after a massive victory like the last two we've seen, he's just happy to pick his units up and go home. And that's the brilliance of a style like this. Notice that Disrespect is morphing like, he's already got some banelings, he morphed some additional ones. He maybe should have only morphed about half of what he did, and now that the um, everything's finished morphing, now morph the other half. You want to morph in small clusters, but always have a few banelings on the field, because it's better to have a few banelings at all times than to have a whole bunch at once. Like, the whole bunch at once, that's for the, like, the final death blow. And it's good, because he's going to have some ground army here to defend the Broodlords. But, eh, it's better to do it in bunches. Hi, GG. So why is this a GG situation? Well, it's a bunch of reasons. Actually, the army supply favors disrespect here. But, this is the final structure that we talked about. Remember in the Newbie Tuesday episode, we talked about the Zerg wanting, like all of the uh, everything below this this line right here well you see the Terran being forced along this route this base has been taken this is going to be the next 
base taken by the Zerg. And that means the Broodlords can park right here with this base's creep, some static defense right in here, and siege right down into this base. Boom. Easy. And the Terran almost always takes this because of the floating, which makes Terran even more vulnerable to this than other races. Because most races are content to take this, not Terran. The Broodlord Siege from this high ground, with Creep support, Queen support, Spines and Spores, Lings and Banelings, is so sickening. Disrespect didn't have to end the game here. This game could have gone on for another 30 minutes, or he could have finessed his way into a victory. But the point is, when you're ahead, get far, far more ahead. Use your having, you know, the entire left hand side of this map, use this base as an offensive defensive point. Like, th like static defense, broodlord defense, Ling Banelings defending the broodlords. All of this is defense, and then you just move the Broodlords forward, and your zone of defense becomes your opponent's base. So rather than like thinking of it as an attack on your opponent, think of it as a mobile defense force. This is like mobile, like slow, but it's slowly creeping over here, and all of its defensive zone and influence. All of its sphere of control comes with it. And then your opponent becomes part of that and it gets baited in. And eventually he just has to lift up and give up the position. Well, what happens when he does that? Boom. You wouldn't go like on this ledge because, you know, what's the point? You gain right here, cut this off so all of this is separated from all of this. Keep the Broodlords kind of like over in this ledge and just swarming it down and blocking like this entire zone right here while the Lings clean up here and the Banelings can be here, here, and you know maybe a couple on this side of the map somewhere, but basically to stop a drop from coming down here and trying to get under the Broodlords. There's just so many tactical options with Broodlords if you're smart about it. Disrespect definitely pounding that in in this game but is this something you typically see absolutely not anyways thank you so much disrespect for an awesome demonstration thank you jay for the idea and thank you viewer whoever you may be for your time for your consideration and for the like that you're about to leave on this video the subscribe you're going to give on the channel if you haven't done so already and for visiting us on Patreon. There are plenty of rewards you can earn for yourself by donating just $1. Please look at the details on the right hand side of that Patreon page. I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming, and until next time, Chatelet, my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not gonna teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.